Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, we're gonna talk about this beautiful cake that I did at work last week. And this one features some gold edible homemade sprinkles, some ripped fondant, and a gold stencil. So let's get right to it. We're gonna start by blooming our gelatin. I am using the super clear gelatin, but you don't have to, you can use any kind of gelatin that you want. And just sprinkle it on, mix it in and set it to the side for about five minutes to fully bloom. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our mats out. I'm using silicone and just because I have very large silicone mats and you can use those or you can use plastic impression mats if you have them. And then we went ahead and once it had bloomed, we put it in the microwave and melted it down and then removed the film from the top. And then I'm just added gold luster dust to the gelatin. And I did add a little bit of, it's a gold, um, like a disco dust to it also to try to add a little bit more shimmer. And then just mix it up and then use a brush. You can use oh, a pastry brush. I'm using this regular art brush that's never been used on art, only been used for cakes. And do a thin layer on your silicone mats. And just to make sure that we had enough gold and reflection, I went ahead and used a dry brush. Once these had set up to the point where they weren't tacky anymore, you could touch it and they weren't sticky. Just takes a few minutes really. Um, use a big fluffy brush and I'm just adding some more just dusting dry dusting the um, gold luster dust and some of that I'm gonna call it disco dust but I'm not sure what brand it's not the disco dust brand but it's the same thing um, and just making sure that it got good coverage there and I did do two other smaller ones that you didn't see me do but that's okay you can see me doing it now <laughs> I did a double batch and I had a lot of it so then we're gonna let it set out overnight at room temperature. You could put them in the, in the um, oven, but I had overnight, so I just went ahead and did that. And now we're gonna go ahead and, and add our color to our buttercream, because I needed, we're, we are calling it a crimson color. And to get the crimson, you start with a very deep red. And I like to use the food processor because that intensifies your color very well and then we add a few drops of red or blue and a few drops of green slowly until you get the intensity of color that you want and this is how I double check the color I like to put it on something white and then let it kind of air dry a little bit so that the um, your color is always going to deepen once it's oxidized uh, and I want to make sure that it was going to be the right color. The first one was a little bit too much brick red. So I went back in and I added some more blue and green until I got the tone that I wanted. And using the food processor, another bonus of that is that it removes your air bubbles and makes your buttercream silky smooth. It really is a good trick. I just wish that the food processor was bigger so I could do bigger batches. And then we're just going to go ahead and get through our final coating of our cakes real quick here and I like to use plastic scrapers for the sides and an offset spatula for the top and then I like to finish up my buttercream with um, a metal scraper a lot of the times because I find that when you're smoothing instead of scraping buttercream off you're smoothing it down the metal works the best and for this bottom tier I wasn't so much worried about the color on the side because that's going to be covered up with your fondant. I just want to make sure that what you see or potentially see is the crimson color and that was the top. So I just added a little bit of white to the crimson color to and, and just lighten the sides. And honestly, I didn't quite have enough to do the whole thing with the crimson anyways. So it was okay on the sides. You wouldn't see it at all. And now we're jumping to the next day in the morning. If you can't tell by the light, I wish I had this lighting all day <laughs> for my videos, but unfortunately I don't. I have a big window to the side of me there, which is great, but when it gets dark, I still have the issue. So those, once they are dried, they will curl up a little bit on the mats and that's fine. It doesn't matter, but they pull off really easily. And then we'll just tear them into smaller pieces 
and put it in. Um, this is like a little ninja that I have. You could use a food processor if that's what you need to use. You, I suppose you could use the emulsion blenders too, but this is more of a chunkier finish or it wasn't as fine as I wanted it to be. It's more chunky. Uh, that'd be fine if that's what you're going for. But to make it smaller, I am using a um, coffee grinder. But to get those big flakes in there, you wouldn't be able to get them all in the coffee grinder. So doing it in stages makes the job a little easier. But I love how that turned out. And you could do that with any metallic that you want. As long as you have the luster dust, you can make your edible sprinkles this way. I think it's a really great way to do it. Now, to get them to stick to the cake, the cake had been chilled. It is firm to the touch and cool. So I am just using some piping gel, watered down with a little bit of water and brushing it on there. And then I'm using this brush. This is actually a hair coloring tool, um, but any fan brush would work as long as the brush you're using is only used on cakes. This went really quickly. I, the wider the brush, the faster it goes. And then I want to make sure we had good coverage, so I'm just using my hand to go ahead and reaffirm that it, there's enough on there and put some on the top also. And then you just brush off the extra, the excess on the top. On the sides, it will fall off. On the top, it'll just sit there. So you need to just remove the extra. Isn't that pretty? I think the lighting for that was perfect. So we'll set that in the refrigerator to cool or to set up and until I'm ready to assemble the cake. In the meantime, I am using my stencils. And what these are, I know it looks like a hot mess right there, but it's different stencils that I piece together with clear tape, packing tape, uh, to make the design that I wanted. Unfortunately, my boss couldn't find exactly what we, what we wanted in one piece. But if you don't mind cutting up your stencils to get them to fit together right, this is a viable option. And then my buttercream consistency is peanut butter. And I'm using the same buttercream that I have on the cake because that way when I, I'm going to paint it, hand paint it. And then that way, if you happen to see the buttercream underneath your stencil, like the gold part that I'm painting it, you're not going to, it's not going to stand out as much as it would if I had done the stencil with a white. Does that make sense? And while that is drying, I am just cutting out my strips. I dyed, dyed, I <laughs> colored my fondant the same color as the buttercream using the same colors. Started with the red, added the blue and the green. Way more red than blue and green. The blue and green, you're just doing dots of it at a time. And then I use my roller, my, um, my cutter, to cut it into strips. And then I'm just softening up that edge there. I, I, I thought I had filmed the tearing of it, but basically all you do is use your fingers to tear the fondant. Once it is set up for a little while and is firm enough that you're going to get a tear out of it instead of just pulling and stretching it. Then I thinned out the bottom of all of them so that they sit more flush to the cake. And I just attached these with just water. And I did two tones. The lighter tone, I just added more white fondant to it. And then I'm going to go over and paint a third tone with gold. I really like to have three, you know, things in threes and odd numbers. I've mentioned this before, but just in case you haven't heard, they tend to be more visually appealing to the eye. So... I will go back and use the same paint that I'm using here on the stencil on random pieces of the fondant. And this is just gold luster dust mixed with Everclear. You can use vodka or lemon extract or um, there's other rejuvenating spirits in different color uh, countries. There's different products, but in general where I'm at, I find that I prefer the Everclear. And you don't have to worry about, yes, it's alcohol, but once it dries, the Everclear evaporates and you're just left with the gold color. So it's perfectly safe to eat. Then I cut all of my straws and my dowels 
to the same height. And I add a little bit of buttercream to the top of them. And I like to pull up three of the middle straws. That helps me, especially when I'm dealing with a tear that I don't want to touch as I'm lowering it onto the bottom tier or the tier below it. I can't touch the sides of this. So that definitely helps me because the weight of the cake will push those straws down and you don't have to touch the sides of the cake. You just can touch the top just to hold it so it doesn't fall over. And then again, I just cut the straws to the same height, add a little buttercream, and this tier I can touch as long as I'm not touching the stencil. And I did put a dowel, a sharpened dowel, through the entire thing to anchor it to the board. And now I'm just using a clothing steamer to steam the extra cornstarch off of the fondant on the bottom. And it actually helps to um, add a little bit more shine to that gold. And I did make a rose to go on top of this cake using the same fondant with some Tylos added to it. Uh, but we had snowstorms last week and I was snowed out and I could not get to work the next day to add that flower and to take pictures of it. So I'm glad I went ahead and added this artificial flower to the top. I think it really suits this um, design and um, it matched the color really well. So this is our final product. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Hope you got something that you can use. And please take the time to like, share, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll catch you on the next one.